Mysteries of History Revealed, Dinosaurs to Extraterrestrials, copyright by Jeremy Aldeny, 2014, all rights reserved. And uh, this is number 15 of the series, and we're starting on page 82. Worldwide post-flood cataclysm discovered. I've been searching for this for many decades, trying to figure it out. I knew there was a cataclysm, but I didn't know what was the nature of it and what caused it. Here is the reference to this Pleistocene Dryas event. N NASA, astrophysics data system, nanodiamonds and carbon spherules from Tunguska, the KT boundary, and the Younger Dryas boundary layer. Whit J. H. Whitkey, Bunch, T. E. West, and A. Kennett, and Kennett. And, uh, and, uh, D.J. Howard, and, uh, G.A., American Geophysical Union, Fall Meeting 2009, Abstract, PP31D1392. The intriguing problem of the Younger Dryas. What does it mean, and what caused it? Posted on June 19, 2012, by Anthony Watts. This is a follow-up posting to the Younger Dryas, the rest of the story. Guest post by Don J. Esterbrook, Department of Geology, Western Washington University. Quote, the Younger Dryas was a period of rapid cooling in the late Pleistocene, 12,800 to 11,500 calendar years. Uh, note, according to evolution years ago, it followed closely the heels of the dramatically abrupt warming that brought the last ice age to a close 17,500 calendar years ago lasted for about 1,300 years, then ended up as abruptly as it started. The cause of these remarkably sudden climatic changes has puzzled geologists and climatologists for decades, and despite much effort to find the answer, can still only be considered enigmatic. I have been seeking the information on this anomalous catastrophic event, too. What caused the sudden extinction of Pleistocene mammals, frozen tropical mammoths in Alaska and Siberia, and formed the ice caps and buried mammals in gravel all over the earth, caused men's lives to drop by one-third, caused tidal waves, and separated the continents 100 or more years after the flood. It has disturbed me that some creationists insist that, insist that this is part of the flood event, or directly after the flood. Geology and the Bible prove this is false. But what caused the cataclysm, and what kind of cataclysm? Quote, The Younger Dryas interruption of the global warming that resulted in the abrupt wholesale melting of huge late Pleistocene ice sheets was first discovered in European pollen studies about 75 years ago. Terrestrial plants and pollen indicate that the arboreal forests were replaced by tundra vegetation during a cool climate. This cool period was named after the pale yellow flower, Dryas octopelia, an arctic wildflower typical of cold, open arctic environments. The younger Dryas return to a cold glacial climate was first considered to be a regional event restricted to Europe, but later studies have shown that it was a worldwide event. The problem became even more complicated when oxygen isotope data from ice cores in Antarctica and Greenland showed not only the Younger Dryas cooling, but several other shorter cooling warming events now known as the Dansgaard Erkster Erkster events. End quote. It appears that the scientists are reluctant to see a connection between the carbonaceous chondrate impact during the driest post-flood period and the sudden drop in temperature. Back, <clears throat> back to the Chablinsk meteorite. Victor Gorsovsky, a professor at Ural Federal University and member of the Russian Academy of Sciences Committee on Meteorites, led an expedition to retrieve remnants of the meteor that survived the plunge to Earth's atmosphere. Gor Gorsovsky 
says the fragments his group analyzed at the university contain magnesium rich chrysolite and sulfite and are about 10 percent iron nickel alloy. This group plans further analysis to fully characterize the meteorites. The 100,000 ton meteor was 55 feet across and is the largest reported since the 1908 Tunguska meteor strike in Siberia. Another Russian meteorite, Shikot Allen. And this is not all. Here is another. I have some pieces of this meteorite. They look like shrapnel or dam damaged iron bullets. Norton O. Richard says, quote, Shikot Allen is an iron meteorite that fell in 1947 on the Shikot Allen Mountains in eastern Siberia. Though large iron meteorite falls have been witnessed previously and fragments recovered, never before in recorded history had a fall of this magnitude been observed. This comes from um, <clears throat> Reference 1, Norton O. Richard, 19, oh, 1998, Rocks from Space, Missoula, Montana, Mountain Press, page 103, ISBN 0878423028. Continuing the quote, an estimated 70 tons of material survived the fiery passage through the atmosphere and reached the Earth. This comes from reference to Richard O. Norton, Chitwood Lawrence A., uh, 2008, Field Guide to Meteorites, Meteors and Meteorites. Field Guide to Meteors and Meteorites. London, Springer Verlag, page 47, ISBN 9781848001572. one Naturalistic Origin of the Earth. Darwin and spiritualist or occult researchers and scientists believe in a naturalistic origin of the earth from meteorites and space dust, uh, dust accumulating over billions of years. This is absurd and it's contradicted by the observation and logic. The rock and soil surface of this earth is different from the rocks and dust found in space. That's how we can determine if a rock is a meteorite or a meteor wrong. If this theory were true, everything on Earth would be a meteorite. You could not tell the difference. See how establishment science can fool your mind? Meteorites have rare elements compared to those in the Earth. Myths about Noah's Ark. There are some myths about Noah and his boat, which are obviously written by pagans descended from the Nephilim who desire to twist the truth. They do give us some information among the lies, so we must sift the truth with the Bible, which is the only reliable source of all truth. We know that Noah had to have been a very wealthy man, or he could not have had the time or money to use the media to reach all of the people on earth to warn them for 120 years. To be wealthy, he had to have had a large, successful business. Ken Ham and Back to Genesis is building a full-size copy of Noah's Ark in Kentucky, and it will cost $24 million. This means Noah had to have been at least a multi-millionaire by today's standards. In addition, he had to have had land to build it on. He also had to have the skills to design the greatest seaworthy ship known. And he had to know how to care for all the kinds of animals. He also warned people for 120 years. He could, do, he could not do that unless he had access to mass media, which could re the whole world. Noah, the flood hero, Noah's Ark, and the Susudra epic. Now this website, noahs-ark-flood.com. The Zeusundra and Gilgamesh epics give us some clues. They were written by pagans of Mesopotamia to discredit the truth as a foundation for skeptics of today and their descendants, which are their descendants. The 
Zusarundra says the ark was a barge that was used by Noah for trade on the river Euphrates, which got caught in a local flood and got washed downstream, then got stuck on a bend in the river. The story uses information from the post-flood period and is obviously fiction. For one thing, the ark had no propulsion system and could not be used as a river transport vessel. Atheist fools take this to be gospel, of course, and assume a local flood. They even claim it is a proof that it is proven because archaeologists found the city of Zisundra, uh, Noah, city of Zeprutapec, was flooded by the Euphrates, which happens occasionally along any large river. Basically, all materialistic arguments like this are attempts to deny God by those who do not want to believe the truth. A little research shows that the city of Zerupapak was a post-flood city in Mesopotamia and could not have been where Noah built the ark before the flood because this city was only inhabited since 3000 BC according to archaeology. So this is most likely where Noah lived after the flood. Why did God choose only eight people? The, the flood brings up questions. Why was it that no one listened to Noah? And why is it that only eight people were saved? Because God can count. The answer is given in Genesis 18, <clears throat> where Abraham appeals to the angel to show mercy on Sodom and Gomorrah. If there are 50 righteous there, Abraham knows how bad they are, so he keeps reducing the number till he gets to 10 righteous people. The Lord agreed. He would not destroy these evil cities if there were ten righteous. This gives the principle that if there are ten righteous, he will not utterly destroy an evil group. However, he will bring tribulations on them. Note, notice that it was three men that met Abraham, but only two went into the city to get Lot. This is because one was the Lord, which was Jesus, in his celestial body before he was born in Bethlehem. And God cannot look on sin. That is why we are separated from him. It would mean instant destruction for the sinner, which means everyone. That is why the Israelites could not approach the mountain. Only Moses and the high priest representing Jesus was consecrated to do that. The priest had to be pure in order to enter the Holy of Holies in the temple. Back to the pre-flood world. How many righteous were there in Noah's time? We do not know. There may have been many, but this number, just like today, was decreasing geometrically as time went on. Many creationists think there was probably millions of people, or even billions. Apparently, just before the flood, there were only ten righteous people. All others had died. Then Enoch was the first to be raptured into heaven alive, and Methuselah died the year of the flood. That left only eight people. Like all questions, the Bible holds the answer if you search and seek the truth. Uh, reference, no one listened to Noah for 120 years, soulwinning.info, which is soulwinning.info, articles, no one listened, htm. There may have been thousands or millions as described above, but when the flood came, there were only eight left. In fact, only eight righteous, that is. In fact, there was only one righteous, and that was Noah. However, the Bible says that when you are saved, he includes your family. According to this website, their speculative calculation on population growth based on today's growth since the flood about 5,000 years ago indicates there would have been about 50 million people killed in the flood. Actually, there should have been more than that, since people lived several hundred years in those days and were much healthier, producing more children in a healthy environment. <clears throat> However, my research indicates that this speculation may be wrong. If large carnivorous animals and continuous terrorism and war were common, it is possible that man was almost extinct. 
There's another factor I discovered in the course of this research for this book. Noah and his family were the only people who were still alive and had not had their bloodline contaminated by mixing with the fallen angels, their offspring, the Nephilim, or their descendants. <clears throat> This explains why Ham was saved. He did not, he, he did not, uh, he was not of the uh, Nephilim bloodline, but he was rebellious, like Cain. So his descendants carried on the Nephilim bloodline after the flood. Satan is very subtle, clever. Satan carries out his plans using those we think are Christians. What was the pre-cataclysmic world like? Both science and geology, paleontology, and the Bible reveal a different world before the asteroid struck the earth and released the fountains of the deep, triggering the flood in Noah's day. Highly mineralized primordial water was sealed inside the earth in chambers or layers below the crust. The iron asteroids penetrated the thin crust of the oceans, causing cracks, creating the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. These cracks traveled around the world, creating the continental plates. The Bible says God created the world on the waters. At the same time, carbonaceous chondrite asteroids containing volatiles exploded in the atmosphere, disrupting the hydrostatic equilibrium, causing the water canopy radiation shield surrounding the Earth in the ionosphere to collapse. And then the meteorite volcanic dust settled later, creating the KT boundary during the calm after things settled down. This same boundary is also found in other strata like the Eocene. This may be a misidentified part of the Cretaceous. Permian, Triassic, Jurassic are, although it is not, are part of the uh, pre-flood or during flood. Although it is not as distinctive as the one at the upper Cretaceous, this is not caused, it, it was not caused by cyclic impacts over millions of years but rather by cyclic tidal deposition during the first part of the year-long flood event. It was the moving water that deposited the sediment. Once the ocean incursion had occur covered the land, it became calm with much less deposition. Continental dry land found on waters of the deep. Psalm 24, 1-2 The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded upon the seas, and established it upon the floods." End quote. Reference, Huge Ocean Discovered Inside the Earth, Live Science. Website, LiveScience.com. Uh, huge Ocean Discovered, Michael Wisson, <coughs> W-Y-S- E-S-S-I-O-N, a seismologist at Washington University, has announced his team's discovery. Scientists scanning the deep interior of the Earth have found evidence of a vast water reservoir beneath the eastern Asia that is at least the volume of the Atlantic Ocean. Water covers 70% of the Earth's surface, and one of its many functions is to act like a lubricant for the movement of continental plates. This unbiased secular research supports creationist Walt, Dr. Walter Brown's hydroplate theory. Evidence shows how the fountains of the deep, under pressure, pushed the hydroplate and hydroplane the continents apart after the flood, pushing limey deep ocean sediment onto the continents, creating limestone rock and cementing cement uh, sediment into rock during the first stages of the flood. We will continue this next time.